Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and it's time for our Game Week 20 episode of Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid. Guys, I hope you had a very, very good Christmas if you did celebrate our, but it is time to get stuck back in with more FPL. Yes, more FPL indeed. If you enjoyed this one, drop a like, do subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get started. Okay, so buys are players you probably don't have, but should consider bringing in. Sells are players you might have, but uh, I think you should possibly remove them. Keeps are players that you might be thinking about removing, but I think you should keep them. And avoids are players that are pretty hyped up right now, but I think they are potential traps that should be avoided. Let's have a look at last week's scores. So unfortunately, guys, I am recording this uh, after the Liverpool versus Burnley game and before the Manchester United versus Aston Villa game. So uh, we haven't got all of the results yet. So uh, here is the three players who have played so far from last game week. Uh, two out of three, but I mean, honestly, who cares? There's not enough data really out there for us to give a, uh, a good depiction of whether it's worked out or not. But wanted to get this video out after the Aston Villa versus Manchester United game nice and early for you guys. Uh, so that's why we've done that like that. But uh, yeah, just want to make one more quick note on the avoids. I did put in Kunku last game week, and I did clarify in the comments that after the uh, the suspension of Sterling and Palmer, I actually don't think Kunku is such a bad pick after all because I think his chances of starting are much more likely tomorrow. But uh, I guess we'll wait and see what happens there. But yeah, I don't think it's an avoid anymore. But uh, yeah, uh, so things move fast in FBL, and we're having to bang out these videos really early at the moment. So on to game week 20, uh, let's start off with some buys. Raya is going to be our goalkeeper buy. He is the one I like the most at the moment. Arsenal just have some really nice fixtures and they're a pretty strong defence at the moment. Yes, they haven't kept a huge amount of clean sheets recently, but when you look through their numbers, 2.4 expected clean sheets over the last five game weeks for Raya. And by the way, this is data from game week 14 to 18, not including 19 because we haven't got all of the game week 19 data yet. Um, but yeah, in general, Arsenal kind of been unfortunate not to keep more clean sheets. And you do think the ability that they have at the back, we will probably see a few more, uh, particularly with these next few fixtures. Fulham, really, really toothless today, actually, uh, when I was watching them against Bournemouth. So I think that's going to be a good opportunity for a clean sheet. And our other buy is going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, he has scored a lot of points again in game week 19, eight points in the end, despite the fact that I don't think he had a particularly good game. I, I think he also got a yellow card in that game. So it was strange to see him pick up all three bonus points, but that's just what he does. And I think right now, now, Trent is kind of the same as Trippier in a, in a sense where he's just dominating the bonus points really well at the moment and he's just going to pick them up naturally. He's just a bonus point magnet, which is very, very good in FPL terms. That's what we care about. Taking shots, creating for his teammates as well. It's all good when it comes to Trent. So even though he is quite expensive, I still do think he is worth picking up. And with the form of Newcastle waning, maybe uh, this isn't such a bad fixture after all. Liverpool at home against Newcastle. So maybe 8.3 million could be worthwhile if you can can afford to get him into your team. So yeah, definitely a pretty good player to pick up right about now, despite that price tag. Our midfield buy is going to be Jared Bowen. He plays against Brighton at home next. And after that, the Sheffield United as well. So some decent fixtures coming up for West Ham. We've got Bournemouth and Man United after that as well, which don't seem like such bad fixtures uh, in my opinion. And Bowen's just been in such great form at the moment. Really, really do like the look of him as an FPL pick. He's just so consistent. He's just been a great player all season, scoring so regularly at the heart of that West Ham attack that is doing really, really well at the moment. So definitely a player you can be thinking about picking up. The one thing I wish is that he scored more bonus points because he doesn't seem to do super well on bonus points and uh, yeah maybe that's because he's not quite the bonus point kind of player but as long as he keeps scoring you're always going to have a chance of that as well and could it be the time for the return of Erling Haaland I'm not sure if he's going to play against Everton on Thursday but uh, I think by the time we get to that Sheffield United game this weekend we could be we could be talking uh, we could be talking big scores because it's a game, home game against Sheffield United. A team just conceded three goals to Luton Town, so it's going to be a big opportunity for Man City to come in and score some goals against them uh, on their return to the Premier League. Uh, well, last uh, technically Thursday will be their return to the Premier League, but I think this is going to be Erling Haaland's return to the Premier League. So I would say he is a player that we really really need to think about getting in. I think he should be back for that Sheffield United game, and if he is, you are really not going to want to miss out on him. He is the captain of the game week if he is confirmed fit for this game uh, game week 20 he really really is so uh, yeah we could be seeing the return of this beast of this goat of FPL and he really is proving to be that isn't he even though there has been some disappointment with injuries recently when he's back he is going to be on fire 
So some cells. Dubravka is going to be my goalkeeper cell. I don't think this is a priority cell necessarily, but when you look at the next three fixtures for Newcastle United, Liverpool City and Aston Villa, you have to be worried with your Newcastle assets. And I think they're all there's arguments to sell all of your Newcastle players really here. So uh, yeah, Dubravka... If you do have him, particularly if you're worried about him maybe getting replaced in the January transfer window, it could be that it's time to move him on now. 4.2 million is pretty cheap, and there aren't a huge amount of goalkeepers who I'm super confident in at the moment. So, I don't think it's, like I say, I don't think it's a priority transfer, but I would be more than willing to sell Dubravka. And Lascelles, another Newcastle player, is going to be another sell here for the defender position. Well, even if he was starting, we wouldn't expect any clean sheets over the next three game weeks with Newcastle's form and the difficult of the fixtures as well but the cells may have picked up an injury actually this game week so it's uh it, it's difficult to say because he wasn't even on the bench even when he is returning when he is fit He's not going to be playing, really, because Newcastle now have their main back four back. They've got the likes of Botman and Byrne and uh, Fabian Scher all playing at the heart of the defence now. So uh, it's going to be more difficult for Lascelles to get game time. He was always a substitute player for Newcastle. And now the players are returning from fitness uh, to, to fitness. Lascelles is going to be dropping out of that team. So I can't see him even being a player who is useful for you in the future. Of course, you could sell other Newcastle defenders as well. If you've got a Fabian Scher, if you've got a Kieran Trippier, I think these are players that you could sell for this next period of three game weeks. But it's after that, those kind of players could become useful. So if you can bench your other Newcastle defenders, then there is argument to keep them. But at the same time, it is absolutely fine to sell them when you look at this fixture run. I think He Chan is, is a pretty easy sell at the moment. You know, if you're looking to buy a new midfielder and you need to sell somebody, He Chan is probably going to be the guy who's most easy to sacrifice. And that's because he's got Everton up next, which is a pretty difficult fixture. It's not a great fixture for uh, for, for any attacker at the moment. Everton have been just pretty strong in general. So it's a, it's a kind of a tough one. Wolves often, often not super great in attack. And, uh, you know, Everton often super great in defence. But the real problem here with He Chan is that because he is a South Korea international. He is uh, going to be going off to the Asian Cup uh, in game week 21. So he's got this fixture and then nothing after that. After that, it kind of depends when South Korea get knocked out of the tournament. But South Korea are actually one of the favourites to win the tournament. I believe they're the third favourites to win the tournament after Japan and Iran. And because of that, it's going to be a case of him being out for a while. Now, if if uh, it's a case that South Korea reached the semifinals or finals, we could see He Chan out for four game weeks. And that's going to be the same for the likes of Hyun Min Son, for example. These players playing in the Asian Cup, they don't have a third place playoff, but they could be out for minimum three game weeks we're really looking at with South Korea. So I would be worried about that one. He Chan is going to have to go eventually. I think, you know, there's so many other midfielders you could be picking right now. He Chan is just super easy to sacrifice. And to be fair, his form hasn't been amazing recently anyway. He has dropped off a little bit. So that makes him a little bit easier to sell as well. And Darwin Nunez, uh, yes, he did just score in that Liverpool versus Burnley game. But do not let that tempt you to hold him if you don't uh, have to hold him because obviously he has really struggled for goals before that was it 11 or 12 games where he had not scored a single goal for Liverpool during that period so I, I don't think just because that one goal that Darwin is suddenly a keep definitely we've seen the likes of Jota and uh, Luis Diaz both combining to get attacking returns in game week 19 as well they were on the bench they come on they got some minutes so we could see by the time we get to this Newcastle game Darwin drops back out the team as well uh, again and maybe we see uh, you know Gakpo or Jota or Luis Diaz it could be any combination of those players playing instead because Liverpool now are pretty much full strength in terms of their attacking players so that does put the likes of Darwin at risk certainly for the Newcastle game until Salah disappears off in game week 21 in which case Darwin uh, game time chances have improved a little bit but still there's probably going to be a bit of rotation here and I'm just not super convinced by this player so uh, yeah I think if you've had him take your points from game week 19 and run away take them and run that is my advice to you there guys I think he is a forward that you definitely can afford to remove from your team right now
Ariola, I'm going to put down as a keep. I know, you know, people don't really like West Ham goalkeeper. People don't really like any goalkeepers, though, at the moment. There's no goalkeeper that's really consistently getting FPL returns. And at least with West Ham and Ariola, the next fixtures are okay. So we have got Brighton up next, who are not nearly as potent of an attack as they once were. So at home, there is definitely a small chance of a clean sheet. And when we're looking at goalkeepers, is there really any other goalkeeper who has a significantly higher chance of a clean sheet? Can't really see anyone. So Ariola, I know he has been disappointing during spells this season, but I feel like he's got a good a chance as anyone over the next two game weeks. So I would be looking to actually keep him. I don't think it's worth a transfer, really. I would I would hold on to him. And how about Pau Torres? A lot of people looking to sell him with his injury that he picked up recently, but back on the bench against Manchester United. Yes, I did check that before I hit the record button. Uh, yes, he is going to be back in the team and probably starting in game week 20 as well. And home against Burnley, that's a real opportunity for an Aston Villa team that have been putting up some really good defensive numbers and also we know the Burnley are oh, again another team that has been a little bit toothless in attack recently we saw that against Liverpool plenty of chances to score but they just could not capitalize on it they just don't have that quality up front so I do think Aston Villa with their good defensive numbers and playing against their you know a, a weaker attack there is definitely a good chance of a clean sheet here so Pau Torres if you bought him a couple of weeks ago before his injury you're worried about his injury you're not sure whether to bring him back. You're not sure if he's going to start or not anymore. Just keep him, man. Honestly, really, really solid pick for Game Week 20. I would also be looking to keep Cole Palmer. Yeah, loads of people already transferring him out. The deadline is barely passed and already loads of people are removing Cole Palmer from their team. Maybe they think he's suspended for Game Week 20 as well, but there's tens of thousands of uh, people removing him. So I just wanted to reaffirm, guys, keep this guy. He is such good value for money at 5.6 million and he plays Luton Town followed by Fulham in the next two fixtures. This is going to be great opportunities for Cole Palmer and anyone worried about Nkunku maybe taking the penalties off Palmer? I wouldn't be worried about it. I think Palmer holds onto those penalties until he misses one. He's been great at them so far. Really cool, really calm. We absolutely love it. And I think he can score a few more FPL points that way as well. And how about his creativity? If Nkunku is going to come back into this Chelsea team, well, he, Palmer has now got an extra player to create for. That's going to really benefit him because he is a very creative player. He's often created a lot of chances this season, but there's not really been anyone to finish those chances off. So do you think actually Nkunku is going to make Palmer a better player rather than a worse player? So definitely would be looking to hold on to him. Hopefully you guys managed to bench him for game week 19, just playing one of your substitutes and for future game weeks we can now just go forward knowing that Palmer is no longer in danger of picking up a suspension through yellow cards gathered because that has been lingering and looming over us for quite some time hasn't it? And how about Julian Alvarez? I would definitely be looking to keep him for the Sheffield United game. I am a little bit worried about him moving forward but if Haaland is somehow out or gets substituted early in that Sheffield United game, then Alvarez will be moving into the striker position. And also, yes, De Bruyne is going to be coming back in the near future, but for now, Alvarez is still going to maintain that uh, De Bruyne position in the team. And who's to say he can't hold his position after that as well? Well, I guess he probably won't. But still, uh, for now, for the time being, for this exact moment, Alvarez is not a player I would be looking to sacrifice for the Sheffield United game, despite the fact he has been a little bit disappointing over the last 10 or so game weeks. If you have him now somehow, for whatever reason... I would look to keep him for at least this game week. Just hold him for this game week at least. After that, you know, maybe you want to move him on. That's totally understandable. But Julian Alvarez against Sheffield United at home, it's just not really a time to sell an attacking player. You know, he's going to be on set pieces as well, which is going to be really, really useful. I think Man City may depend on set pieces during certain parts of that game. That's really going to benefit Alvarez as well. So keep Julian Alvarez. Finally, some avoids. We'll start you off with Leno. Yeah, he's obviously a goalkeeper a lot of us have been looking at recently. And you can definitely understand why. He's a guy who makes plenty of saves. Disappointing result for him in game week 19. But moving forward, I'm worried about this Arsenal fixture. I just don't think I'd want to own Leno up against his old club, to be honest. It's just going to be a tough game. And you do expect Arsenal to score in that one. So Leno is not going to be the ideal transfer for this week. After that, we've got Chelsea and Everton. I guess he's going to be an optional buy by that point after that we have got Burnley but I really think this game week you probably hold off on Leno 
and then maybe start thinking about maybe bringing him in if you do really want him, but certainly not an essential player over the next few game weeks, in, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, just uh, not quite convinced that Fulham are going to be able to maintain their form that they showed a couple of weeks ago. I think that might start to uh, wane a little bit. However, there is another team that's been in great form, and that is Bournemouth. So no doubt people will be looking to pick up Bournemouth players, particularly Sinesi, who got another return in game week 19. He is doing really well at the moment, picking up those FPL points. But the problem is for Sinesi and the Bournemouth defence is that they're playing Spurs and then Liverpool. We're talking two of the best attacks in the league. You could argue that Spurs and Liverpool are the two best attacks in the league at the moment. You really could say that. But it's not going to be good news for your Bournemouth defenders. So if you haven't already bought Sinesi, I definitely would be looking to hold off on that transfer move for now. So even after that, we've got West Ham away, another team that do know how to score a goal or two. I just think the next three game weeks are just not good for Bournemouth defenders. So don't buy them. You can maybe even think about selling them at this point if you want to. Like if I had Sinesi right now, I would I would be benching him for the next three game weeks anyway. If you can't bench him, then maybe that makes him a sell. So that's what I'm going to say about him. And uh, to be honest, I don't expect him to score too many goals moving forward either. I know a lot of you guys have been enjoying his attacking returns recently, but I don't think that's going to happen every game week, to be honest. I know it looks like it's going to happen every game week, but, you know, when you actually look at the numbers, you drill down into those numbers, it's not it's not something that he's done a lot of in the past, and his underlying numbers don't suggest to me that he's going to score every week. I mean, three shots in his last four games, it's not a huge amount. Unless he's going to be, like, super clinical, like Lionel Messi levels of clinical in front of goal, I don't know. I'm not quite sure about that one. But uh, yeah, for these bad fixtures, don't expect clean sheets and don't particularly expect attacking returns either. So Kudus is once again an avoid, uh, not because I think he's going to play badly against Brighton. I think he could have a good game against Brighton, but you're guaranteeing yourself a transfer out. If you're buying Kudus for, for game week 20, then you've basically got to spend two transfers on him. You've got to spend one to bring him in and then another one to take him out again. So this doesn't really seem worth it when he is going to AFCON in game week 20. Uh, again, similar situation with He Chan is that with uh, the African teams and the African players who are playing it for international uh, teams, it's going to be a case of, depending on how far in the tournament goes, they will be out for longer. I do expect Ghana to at least get out of the group stages. So we're talking about game week 20 and 21 out as a minimum. But the problem, the bigger problem really with AFCON is that uh, they have a third place playoff. So even if you make the semi-finals, you're basically guaranteed to go all the way to the end of the tournament because, you know, you're playing the third place playoff, right? So yeah, it's... um. It's not an ideal one, Kudus. <laughs> he's playing very well. He's a player I'm sure everyone is looking to pick up. But because he's disappearing off in game week 21, it just doesn't seem worth it. It just doesn't seem worth it at all right now. So, uh, yeah, an avoid for me. Um, one more quick note, I suppose, is that he's, uh, he is massively outperforming his numbers. So, yes, he has scored four goals in the last five game weeks, but he's done that with an XG of just one. I don't think there's any player in the history of football who has ever came close to that um, in terms of consistently overperforming. So, yeah, uh, he's done well, but just, yeah, just chill. Don't worry, don't worry about him too much but if you already have him obviously keep him but yeah don't buy him I don't think and even if you are keeping him this game week you're probably going to sell him next game week right and finally Cunha yes Cunha's form has really dipped in the last two game weeks hasn't it he was like that guy who was just consistently returning an attacking return every single game that has stopped now. That's stopped over the last couple of game weeks. His form is dipping. Wolves' form is dipping a little bit. And the fixtures aren't particularly good either. Uh, Everton at home, Brighton away, Manchester United and, and Chelsea all in a row. Um, maybe that Man United game is not so bad at the moment. But outside of that, they're mediocre fixtures. They're they're not ideal, are they? So um, I wouldn't really be expecting too much from Cunha, Wolves or any of the Wolves players or attackers, really. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a new forward, I think the time to buy Cunha is pretty perhaps in the past, you know. I think you missed your chance on Cunha now. We need to move on to bigger and better things like Erling Haaland. A little bit of a difference in price there between the two players, but yeah, still, but by Haaland and not Cunha, as, as if I need to explain that to anyone. So just as a quick summary, guys, it's going to be difficult to get all of the players in. If you are looking to get Erling Haaland back into your team, it may be that you have to sacrifice Salah, particularly if you have or want Trent Alexander-Arnold as well. You just kind of got to accept at this point, you can't have everyone. Even if you think you can have everyone, it's probably because you are either avoiding Haaland or you are selling Salah. Can't have them all. Um, I don't mind selling Salah 
in order to get Hall in, but I can't say I love it, to be honest. Uh, it's going to be a, a tricky one. Uh, everyone, everyone out there is going to be missing one player. So don't worry too much about adding all of the big premium players this game week. By the time we get to game week 21 and, you know, Salah and Son have gone off to their international uh, duties, then it's going to be a lot easier to get all of the players that you want in. But for now, this game week, game week 20, it's just going to be a week where you have to just accept you can't have everyone, but you can at least have a decent selection of players. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure you do drop a like before you disappear and do subscribe if you are new around here as well. We're going to try and get out plenty of content for the Game Week 20 uh, deadline or before the Game Week 20 deadline. So stay tuned for that one. I know it's been a, a mixed amount of content recently because of the deadlines and because of Christmas. It's just been tough, but hopefully we'll be getting back into the swing of things now, finally. So, uh, guys, thank you once again for watching and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.